Hi, in today's episode, I am working on these guys here. These are the high wind linear rails and mine is worn out on my machine. So I have decided to reball it and I'd like to show you how I did that. So I decided to reball these because after talking to the engineer at Baltech, I understood how difficult it is to make a high quality ball. These balls are made out of chrome steel and they have a certain grade or a class, precision class. And I knew that if I would reball them as high quality balls, I put, could potentially have a better guide than what you purchase when you get them from either Taiwan or China. Now, the ball diameter is very, very critical. And I only opted to increase that diameter by three ten thousandths of an inch. These balls are measured in inches, even in metric um, units. And that has to do with the fact that the largest supplier of high quality balls is in the United States and they operate worldwide. So if you have seen my last video, I mentioned that the whole gantry tips forward. And um, let me show you in a measurement what I mean. To eliminate the play in the fixed bearing and the ball screw, I set up a stop block at the bottom of the y-axis. The left side of the machine here, you can see I can move it to up to about one tenth of a millimeter and I'm leaning against it with a really high force. Now in comparison, after reballing the right hand side, we are seeing roughly two hundredths of a millimeter play that is still left. Okay, so here are the tools that we will need. A little bit of grease and a screwdriver. That makes it easier to maneuver the bolts around uh, when we reassemble it. Of course, uh, the new bolts, 124 will need for one guide. And then I like to work on a microfiber cloth because if I drop the ball down, it won't roll off the table. It will remain right here. Okay, then I have also one observation that I'd like to share with you. And that is if you take this turned around, then you will find right now in the inside of this that there is a ton of aluminum ships right here. And I'll show you why they're there. The guide rail itself has those green plugs right here. And you see that this one is nice and flush with the surface. And if I show you this one right here, there is a gap between the surface and the top of the screw plug. And what will happen is there will be a chip that is laying right here. And when the guide rides over it, it picks it right up and then it's basically trapped inside of it. Okay, first order of business is to take the grease nipple off and um, the plug for the other side where the grease nipple is. And there's two screws right here on either side for the seal. They have to come out and then we're gonna take both of the red seals off. And I've cleaned the inside out now, just all of the chips. And um, here's another tip for you. If you ever have a problem where you cannot hook up the grease nipple on the front, there is actually a hole right here. You can drill through that hole put another screw right here to plug this and put the grease nipple into this port right here. Just an FYI if that ever would happen. So in the next step I will loosen up these two screws and that will remove the green plastic piece. And when we do that, there is the red seal right here. Don't worry about it. It will just slip out on either side. Then there is a black guide right here. And that guide is fastened on one side. It's clipped in basically to the green and it lets go on the other. So it will be opposite on each. So one of the top side guides are going to come out with this piece and one of the top guides is going to come out with this piece. Then in addition there is yet another guide and that is inside the center right here. 
so it goes down the middle of the track. Uh, difficult to catch that on camera, but it would be like right here. And that is just free floating. So when we take it apart, that will just pop right out. And later on, we just have to place it back in. Uh, it's not held in place other than by the screws as the um, bolts themselves. Okay, so we're just gonna take one side out and there's gonna be some bolts dropping out. So the red seal, that just stays in there like so, we can take that off. And then this one just leaves that in place, I think, um, just sets that aside for a moment. And on the other side, the same thing is gonna happen. So leaves a black piece inside and that, that one can, can come out. And here is the channel that will recycle the ball from one track into the other track. And make sure that later on also you fill these. Okay, and there we have it. That's the inside. There's two rows right here on either side, 124 balls all together. So now is the task of getting them all out. That's easy. Zzzt. Okay, let me do that. I'll be right back. Okay, this might be difficult to see. It's black on black, but there is a clip at the bottom and that just comes out like so. And I'm going to take it out because it's full of grease and I want to get all of the old grease and chips out. And then there are the two floating guides that I told you about. So there's one coming out right here and that's just in the center of this groove basically. And again, cleaning it and also this one, cleaning it as well. And then I'm gonna take all of the old grease out. Okay, in the next step, I like to get rid of all of the old balls that are on the table. So basically all of these need to go Make sure there's nothing left in these green recycling portions right here uh, that you get all of the balls out of this. We don't want to mix the old and the new. So these come off the table or back there. Now I have here a cup that's 124, that's going to receive 124 of the new bolts out of this pack right here. And I'm going to do that next. And then I'm going to start to put um, one of the green elements back on. And then I will start filling the channel that you see right here. I'm gonna to start to fill both of those um, on one side and work my way then to the center. So let's do that next. So one side is back on. And just go to tighten this down, side down. Okay, before I do anything else, actually let's get this clip in. So the clip orientation is, you will see sort of a track pattern on here. And that track pattern needs to, of course, face up. And so I'm gonna put that in here like so, and it will scoot right into the green housing here on one side. I know it's difficult to see, but um, just, you know, put it back in the center. Okay, so now let's uh, fill these two channels. And what you will notice is that certain, at a certain height, they're just gonna drop out the bottom. And that's when you stop and um, start filling from the center as well. Both channels are filled as good as I can with the screws. If some of them drop out right now, it's not so important. And I put one of the green sides for that, of course, back on. Now, this side here has a black guide attached to it, as you can see right here. But then I also put in the red sealing lip right here. And the way they have to face is that you will see those injection pins basically right here in the plastic piece. These are the dimples, the red um, round dimples right here. You can't see them on camera, but they are facing 
down, okay? And um, the next task is really a little bit um, just try and error. I cannot do it on camera, I'm sure. It's going to take too long, but um, you have to engage the bottom clip, both of the guides, the black one, and both of the red ceiling pieces back together. And that's going to take you a moment. Um, just be patient. If you have to try five times, then that's what it's going to take. All right. Okay. Actually, that worked on the first trial. Um, now the next task is that we're going to work on one side and we will put in the bottom track of that side. We're going to start filling that up with the bolts. Okay. Difficult to see here with the, with the black on camera. I know that, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a ball right here and then just, you know, drop it in there. And at this stage also, if you like, you can add some grease to the bottom track so that these balls will actually stay put. Okay. All right, let me do that and I'll be back. All right, so for the next step, I'm just going to simply put some grease on the back of this plastic guide right here that is in the center of the two rows and that will just keep it in place. All right. And now the flat side of this is going to go onto the steel. Now you will be not able to see this, but it basically goes back here in the center of this whole assembly. So in between the two rows and I'll see if I can do that here pretty quick. Okay, that worked. So now it's in. And don't worry that it is positioned perfectly or not. It, it doesn't need to be. We, it's going to be self-aligning when we put this, the upper row of balls in. Okay, I filled the lower row with all of the balls that I can get in there. You will notice that at one point of time there it's going to be a hard time getting any more balls in there and if you put one in it's just another one comes back out so at that time you need to take one and uh, that one will need to go into the upper rail and we're going to do that from the outside so from here and that will align the floating centerpiece that we just put in in the prior step okay um, let me see if I can do that right here. So I'm just going to drop that in there and I'm going to push with my finger to snap it in to the top. Once you got like a couple of balls in that way, the center section is realigned and now we can keep filling in more balls. You also did not hear me uh, say anything of the quantity um, that I counted and I'll show you uh, towards the end of how we determine that that track is full. Okay so the next task is um, to show you once that track is filled and that probably is going to be difficult to get on camera but I will try. So if you see if you see this row of balls right here then if you push that with a screwdriver, there has to be a minimal gap in between. It is usually less or about one size of a ball. So you can also count them out if you want to. It's 31 per one track and you need to do that on the lower and of course also on the upper one. So as you want to be able to wiggle these around and if you push on it, then, you know, they are coming out the other end and there's no further gap. So you have only have one gap and that one gap is about the size of one ball, maybe a tad smaller, okay? And then it should be 31 in one track. All right, and that is that. I'm gonna do the other side, same way. Okay, both of the seals are on now and the grease nipple is back on, the plug screw is back on and you might be familiar with this tool. This is a keeper. Uh, it's similar it's basically that the piece sits on the rail. And when you slide that in, be careful um, not to drop the ball out. 
that can happen. So there it is, it's on there now and um, we're going to use this basically to slide the guide rail onto the rail itself. I hope you got some value out of this video and maybe you can leave me a like in return. Now for the keen viewer that follows my channel, you will see there is a new piece right here on the machine. It is the second bracket that I wanted to make for capturing the upper portion of the spindle. And I show you how I made that in the next video. Catch you then. Bye.